Hi, this is Craig, and I'm going to show you how to use Clip Wrap to import Sony AVCHD footage into QuickTime to use in a nonlinear editing system. I'm going to show you why that's important if you're using a Macintosh and you're, you're, you end up with a Sony file structure that you've copied to a hard drive that only has some of the footage in it. I'll actually talk to you about it as we go along. We have here a case where I have a bunch of source footage and what I have is a back camera for day four here. Uh, this is from a festival I went to, so this is the day four's footage. If we open up this uh, particular camcorder's footage that was shot on a Sony camcorder, we can see uh, quite a file structure in here and we can drill down to ABC HD. We can come down, we can, we can ignore this right now. So let me just drag this to the trash. We don't need to worry about this. This was a file that was saved by mistake. And what we'll, what we'll have is uh, these MTS files. This is on the original camcorder footage. And you can see these MTS files actually are video files. And I'll show you an example of this by doing a get info. The Macintosh can show you information on these files and you'll see a preview. So I can tell that this is footage. Actually, this is from the Kai Kai concert. As you can see, this is and this would be. Let me do a good info on this. Both of those are from the same concert. So basically, there were either two clips or one clip that was split apart uh, from the recording of this. We can see that there is a 0 and a 1 file here. If I open up uh, another file in here, another uh, AVCHD file, and do a get info on it, I can see that it's actually a different band. You can see there's this person here. This is a different band. So these are all the bands from that day. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to import this footage, but one of my goals was to provide a copy of these clips to the bands so they'd have the source clips themselves. So I want to create like another directory, but only have the band footage, which would be these ABCHD files sent to each band. I had to test this and I wanted to find out how I could do that. Could I import it in? How do I import it right now? You know, this footage being AVCHD. I mean, here it is. It's an AVCHD video file. But if I try to open it with QuickTime, the QuickTime app, I only see two options here. I can see this new program that I've installed here or a QuickTime player. If I try to open it with QuickTime player, I get an error. Also, if I try to import it directly, this will be grayed out. You won't see this uh, file. So the AVCHD footage isn't. Uh, available natively uh, for the Mac. Now what I can do is uh, I can try to create like another file folder. Here's my uh, Kai Kai folder that I try to create because I'm trying to set, set aside these folders for the band. And we'll look at the back camera again and you can see I've copied some of these files down here and when I go down to look I've only put in the two as you can see files that relate to this band Kai Kai. I don't want to send Kai Kai Iona's footage and I don't want to send Iona Kai Kai's footage. So here's the case where I'm, I'm trying to just uh, segment and create a kind of edited version of the Sony camcorder. This creates a problem though. Let's look at uh, iMovie. I have it already running here so we're going to go in and I'm going to show you how iMovie works. iMovie can't import the files directly. You can see I already have imported these into a a clip, but we're not worried about that. We're going to try to do another import for this demo. And if I if I go in and I, I say import movies, and I go down and I drill down, and uh, I go, I can import. I can import. You can see a Canon file. I can import that directly, as you can see. This is from my Canon EOS. I can import an iPhone file because these are QuickTime files. But if I go to find a Sony file. So we can find one here. Here's the new folder. And I drill down into the AVCHD and I have to come down to the they're grayed out. I can't bring in the AVCHD footage directly. So I can't even import this footage this way. So now there's, there has to be another way to import it obviously or hopefully uh, on the uh, Macintosh side. What I can actually do is I can import from the camera archive. 
not from the camera connected, but from the camera archive. So I select a camera archive, and uh, I can back out, and I'm gonna back all the way out to actually to my Seagate 5 drive, and I'll back out to uh, the Seastone uh, video and audio, which, you know, source footage, and I'll go to day four, and I'll find the back camera, and I'll, I'll select, as you see, when I, as soon as I select this back camera folder here, it shows camera archive detected, click import to proceed, so I can just click import, it'll mount this complete directory, because it's a copy of everything that was on the camera. So when I say import, it's going to open up that archive and show me the footage. Now here's Kai Kai. Here's a Kai Kai clip. Here's a Kai Kai clip. Actually, this clip I don't need. This is the hour and two minutes I need, which was their sound check and their performance. So I can import this footage. Now if I go to import this footage, it'll take, you know, it's 102 minutes. It'll take around real time, but maybe twice as long because it's to create arc, uh, uh, thumbnails and other items, but it's gonna it's gonna be roughly real time. So if it's an hour of footage, it might take an hour or two to report this, which is uh, you know takes some time, but it's still digitally done, and you walk away and it's done. Now, if I want to, let's say I don't want to import it this way. Let's say I want to import the footage that I've sent to uh, this band because I've only sent this reduced file structure. If I go in, you know, I try to create a movie archive that was here for the band. Okay, here's the back camera. It's got the same file structure. You know, and I, I click this high level back camera file structure, but I've reduced all these files in here because I only want to send the band their clips. So what happens is when I click click this, you can see it says select a folder that's a camera archive. It doesn't recognize this as a camera archive because I've altered it. I've actually tried to reduce because I don't want to send Kai Kai. Uh, you know, footage from the choir or something, <laughs> you know, I don't want to send them all the footage, I just want to send them their footage. So now I'm stuck, at least on the Macintosh, and I don't know about the PC, I gotta still check with the PC, that'll be another issue, but, um, so how, what do I do? Well, or what would the band do if they had this and they had a Mac and they wanted to re-edit this footage themselves and use the source? Well, what you'd have to do is you'd have to use another program that would allow you to import this footage and it, it will take more time to do it. In that program, uh, let me go back and bring up this footage, the direct footage for Kai Kai. And uh, I can open this up with ClipWrap, which is a $50 program. It's roughly $50, I believe. And uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to only select one of the uh, pieces of footage here, the, the shorter piece, and say open that up with clip wrap. When I open it up with clip wrap, what clip wrap will do, and they have a demo version of this, I can either rewrap the video, which will actually take the AVCHD footage and, and wrap it inside of a, and also I'm copying this by the way, it'll rewrap it into a QuickTime file with a QuickTime header. So the AVCHD footage can be uh, looked at directly by uh, nonlinear editing systems. Now, the more recent ones might be able to look at them directly and not have to do an import. Or I could import it into a, a QuickTime uh, Apple Intermediate file, which will be much larger. So I can rewrap this. It's still going to have to go into some sort of Apple uh, QuickTime file, possibly, at least with the earlier versions of uh, the systems that I'm using right now. But uh, I can use rewrap as a quick way of converting it. So if I say convert, it'll convert it very quickly. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I'm going to actually delete this selection and go in and try to open multiple spanned files, which means it's more than one MTS file that's inside this directory. And so I'm going to go into this Kai Kai. Uh, that's not it. That's in probably for the import. So I think I have to be down here. Bear with me here. Okay, so here's the here's the new footage, let's say I sent this to the band, and they, they received this, they'd have to drill down, find the, the MTS files, and they could select two of them, and say open, and it will say we have a multi-part. Now we want to click on clip wrap 
and look at the the way these are inserted in. Uh, at times, the uh, it would put these in the wrong order when I open this. You have to make sure they're in the right order. If they're in the wrong order, it's going to create one master clip, and these clips will be out of order. If you want to rearrange the order, you can do this right inside the program to rearrange the order. Make sure your MTS files are in ascending order. So now, if I want to, you can see the format is 1080i ABCHD, and it's going to import this and create a QuickTime uh, clip. I've already done this. I'm not going to do this now. It'll take about maybe eight or ten minutes for this hour of footage, and. Uh, what I'm going to do is, um, what's kind of interesting is there's two clips there. It's another story, but basically there, there was like an hour of uh, concert footage. Um, the clips in the camera archive show something different, which is uh, kind of interesting. I'm not sure why I'm getting that, but there is something different about the camera archive than these direct clips. So what happens is when I end up converting them, and I've done this on the desktop, I end up with a movie like this. This, as you can see, this movie is not two gigs in size. It's been rewrapped, and it's uh, four gigs in size. This is a rewrapped movie. Kind of interesting, actually, that the size is expanded. It's all, it's supposedly just rewrapped the footage. I'm not sure why that's the case. I guess that's a question that others could answer. So now, when I go to look at the same uh, this file. This file is a, a movie file. It's actually a QuickTime file that was created by ClipRap pretty quickly, and I can actually import it or open it with a, with a whole variety of programs, and that would include importing it inside uh, iMovie. Let's just open it up really quickly in QuickTime Player, take a quick look at the footage, and then we're going to go to a full screen mode because this. Sorry about that. Let me turn down the audio all the way. This computer doesn't show. Uh, 1920 by 1080. This is actually just showing. This is showing our resolution at half resolution. You can see uh, the data rate is pretty high, and you can see the size of the data file. So here we have uh, basically high resolution footage, you know, being displayed. You know, it's normal sizes, 1080i, 1920 resolution. I'm displaying it at uh, a smaller resolution because this monitor on this laptop doesn't support that size of a screen. So, and you can see that there's ripples here. This is interlaced artifacts that would, could be removed depending on how you export, uh, depending on what you target for, but uh, you wouldn't see this on a TV that was showing interlace or that was uh, decoding this correctly if you edit all the footage correctly. So here you can see we have the footage and it's quite a bit of footage here. We have the the concert, which is only a 30 minute set in the warm up. So there's the band. Uh, from one camera angle, you know, as you can see. Now, I'm going to get out of this and show you what happens when we try to import this footage into iMovie. It will take significantly longer. I'm actually going to quit in the middle of the import because I don't want to import that footage, <laughs> spend all that time. But I can import a movie directly. I could import the MTS file, obviously, but if we go to the desktop and we select this movie, and I, and I say import this thing, and I'll say import it to my external Seagate 7, because I can, I can import up to 10 hours of footage. It's going to not import the clip wrap quickly. It's going to take quite a bit of time, and it's going to actually convert this. As you can see, it's giving this calculation of 7 or 8 hours or something. It's going to take a long time, and this thing is varying because It doesn't know what's, how long it's going to take. It probably going to be about seven hours. I haven't done a long import like this. You know, there's no need for me to do that. But the bands, if they were going to use this on a Mac system, I don't know if they could import the MTS footage directly uh, into a PC-based system. I'm, I've been told some systems should be able to do it, but I don't know if the only parts of the footage are there. If it'll let me import that uh, footage quickly, I may be to do a test with a friend's uh, system who has a, a better uh, nonlinear editing system for PC than I do since I don't have any for my PC and uh, you know maybe uh, try his Vegas Pro system and see if I can import these reduced uh, streams so from the Mac perspective uh, they would probably need to use clip wrap and you can see you would be uh, spending quite a bit of time for importing each of the camera angles 
you know, to be able to use them in a, in a editing system. So there we have it. That's a quick uh, summary of it, the nature of the problem, uh, and the problem of trying to take uh, an archive and sending only part of it to somebody. There might be a, a, some kind of a workaround. One workaround might be I might be to export the entire archive and then re-import it, edit it in the camera, then re-import re it in again with only the, the footage from each one. So I might be going back and forth to the camera, editing it down for each band, and then bringing in a camera archive afresh from the camera with, with all those clips edited. But I don't know if that'll really work. It should work in theory, but I don't know if that'll work. Um, it might work, but it would be an awful lot of work just to cut, just to make sure that the bands aren't getting footage from other bands. So rather than do that, I'm gonna probably send some sort of reduced assets and depending on each band situation, uh, if they really need uh, the footage for a, pro a project and re-edit and I can send it to them later. Uh, I may not even send them all footage, although it was my goal to be able to send them all a copy digitally of all the source footage. Uh, the footage might not be sufficiently uh, of sufficient quality where they can really use it or they really may not have the project or the time to edit it. So I may not just, uh, I may not send them the, uh, the quickest uh, footage to import or even all the footage. They, they may have to request it from me. Uh, because as you can imagine, uh, it's, a, it's a great thought, but it's much easier for me to take, let me quit this, import if I can, quit iMovie. Actually, I might not be able to quit this during the import process. I might have to, hang on a minute here. I may have to actually force iMovie to quit to stop this, which is, you know, during this demo, it's fine. So now it isn't going to import the footage. All right, anyway, so that's, the, that's my quick discussion, and I think it's about time to end this video.